Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be installing a wideband oxygen sensor as well as a boost gauge in the Camaro. Now, where I left off, I just finished installing the meth kit. So the next step is going to be get the wideband installed as well as tie up a few loose ends. Um, I'm probably gonna go and um, install a heat shield under the hood here. I went and picked up some stick-on heat shield material just to prevent any uh, problems with the blower heating up the paint. I did go and fill the meth tank up, so that's all ready to go. And then after that, I mean, I think the only thing really left to do is hook the pusher fans up to the switch inside the car, um, secure the panel down, and then just really give the car a good cleaning because it is filthy inside and out. But going over to the parts I picked up. So the wide band I'm going to be installing today is an Innovate Motorsports LC2. This thing is a couple of years old. I had it on my original setup. I just didn't reinstall it when I did the wide pipe. So the whole purpose of a wide band is pretty much to give you an exact air fuel ratio reading. So unlike a traditional oxygen sensor, um, basically the two sensors that are on the motor, they're literally just sensing oxygen in the fuel and they're gonna adjust the mixture accordingly. Um, it's just too rich, it's gonna take away gas. Uh, too lean, it's gonna add some. But with the wide band, it's pretty much gonna tell you that exact mixture reading and it's really useful to have um, as far as tuning goes even if you're not a tuner um, just having it installed is a good idea because um, if you're doing a run at the track uh, you'll be able to see this reading um, if it's going up and getting too lean you could get out of it but installation is pretty straightforward I did modify this harness a bit being I did have it installed so I just uh, cut some wires cleaned it up a little bit um, for the second installation um, but basically you have a ground you have an ignition power and then this little red one here that's actually yellow in the harness that goes to 12 volts from your headlight switch so when you turn the headlights on it's going to dim the lcd and then there are also two other wires in here that are actual outputs to go to hp tuners if you have hp tuners pro you can actually log the wideband reading directly to your laptop and then while i'm at it i'm going to be installing a boost gauge and to mount this stuff up i have this uh, autometer dual gauge pod that's specifically designed for a third gen it's pretty much molded to fit exactly over the driver's side pillar and this is just a real cheap boost gauge um, I had it in the Outback before. That car's relatively stock. I mean, I just have some Cobb stuff in it um, and a, like a stage two tune. But with the Cobb controller, I could actually read the boost through the LCD on that. So I don't really need this. So I pulled it out and I figured I can use it in the Camaro. But for actually getting this thing installed in the pipe, you are gonna need a uh, bung to screw it into. So I'm gonna be going onto the car, drilling a hole, welding this in, and then we can just screw the sensor right in and we'll go inside and wire everything up. So under the car, I'm gonna be installing this in the bank one header. Now you want the actual orientation of this to be pretty much um, somewhere above nine and three o'clock. Uh, you don't want to put it down here. Obviously, it's going to get ripped off if your car is low. But even if you have the space, mounting it down here is just going to allow water and crap to sit inside the sensor. And it's probably going to get killed really fast. So try to keep it somewhere between um, 9 and 3 o'clock. But uh, I was originally going to drop the whole Y pipe to install this because I figured I was going to put it up here. But I think I could get the drill right in the side here under the transmission and then I'll just uh, I'll be able to weld the bung in and install it just like that and I can run the wires up and into the car. As I said this was installed before so I, I know exactly like where I'm gonna run the wires already. It's just about really drilling the hole and welding it. All right, so I just finished drilling the hole and that thing fought me all the way to the end, but I did get it done. In the end, I just had to come in with the Dremel and uh, clean up the burrs on the inside. But once that was done, the bung slipped right in. So you can see that's relatively straight. I don't have it aiming down or anything like that. Now I'm just gonna come in here, weld this up real quick. I'm gonna pull the sensor out and then we'll fish this guy up through the floor. Um, I'm using the hole for the uh, old transmission cable when it used to be an automatic. Uh, there's a little grommet there for the old cable. I just used that. The only thing is I gotta leave the sensor out because uh, when setting it up to calibrate it, you have to have it out of the pipe. After it's wired up, we'll come back under here and screw this back in. All right, so the bung is welded in. Um, I didn't do any time lapse for that because last time I did a time lapse welding in a tight area, like when I did the intercooler, a piece of slag melted like the LCD on the front of the camera. But that's all welded up. And I just want to take a second um, to talk to you guys about my welder. So I'm using a Lincoln 140 Pro MIG. I've had this thing for maybe about two and a half years. And up until I bought it, I was always using the $100 Harbor Freight welder. I actually went through two of those guys before I finally bit the bullet and bought this thing. Um, it was a little expensive. I believe out the door with the helmet intact, it was around 700 bucks. 
opposed to the $100 Harbor Freight one, um, which is why I was using that one for so long. But uh, I used that thing for years um, without too much of a problem. With my first machine, the motor actually went out and it wasn't feeding. And then the second one, I always had problems with the feed mechanism where if it's too tight, you know, the wire wouldn't come through, or if it's too loose, the whole thing would just like unravel and uh, turn into just a big rat's nest of wire. And that was extremely frustrating. So eventually I just, you know, gave up, went and bought this thing and uh, it was well worth the money. You can hook up gas to this and use regular MIG wire. Uh, for now, I'm just using a 10 pound uh, flux wire spool, but it does have the connection in the back to hook up the uh, gas. It's just easier to use the flux wire for me because I don't have to lug, uh, the welder alone is extremely heavy and then having to lug like a big uh, can of argon in and out of the house, it's gonna be even more of a pain in the ass. Even just using the flux wire over the Harbor Freight one, it just welds so, so much better. So I would highly recommend if you're doing a lot of welding, uh, pick up one of these guys. When I got this, I wasn't really expecting to do much welding, but I mean, between doing the entire Y pipe, um, putting the Y band in now, the heat exchanger, the cage, I mean, it paid for itself relatively quickly. Plus I still have to do a good amount of rust repair. Um, there is inside of here uh, that needs to be done as well as a couple of spots in the floor on the driver's side. So I am gonna get more use out of this thing. All right, so uh, working our way back into the car, I think the next step I'm gonna do is take down the pillar here, um, put the gauge pods on, get the gauges actually installed in there and just run the wires down here and then we'll go and wire everything up. For actually running the power to the uh, unit for the wideband, I decided I'm just gonna go and use one of these little piggyback things. I normally don't like using these, but um, the reason being, my i have a couple of circuits in there that aren't being used anymore that i can utilize for instance uh looking at the wiring diagram here for my car uh on the fuse box here i have the um the ecm fuse in the top left which is a 10 amp circuit being i'm not running the ecm anymore and i'm not running my fuel pump off of that uh, circuit anymore i'm just going to use that um, to piggyback off of for my wideband um, looking at the instructions, the whole circuit for the wideband only uses three amps. They recommend using a five amp fuse. So that's gonna be fine for running the wideband circuit. But for actually mounting this thing, it's extremely simple. Um, obviously we're gonna have to make a couple of holes for the wiring to go through for the gauges. But aside from that, literally this just sits over here. Oh, if I put it on the right way, that just sits over there. And then you just drill four holes, pretty much like one in each corner. And it just gets held in with these little like um, push pins. But according to the instructions, we're gonna need a 3 16 hole. Uh, so I'm gonna get a 3 16 bit, drill four holes in this, and um, I'm probably just gonna mount it as low as I can. I don't really want it in my face. Um, I think right about there should be good. All right, so I just finished wiring up the sensor and um, now we're gonna get ready to calibrate it. Just to run you through how I wired everything out, I put the wideband on top and the boost gauge on the bottom. Um, I ran the vacuum hose for the boost gauge just down the pillar and uh, behind this plastic. And then it comes out here and then I just uh, connected it to that T that you saw I hooked up in the last video coming from the meth kit. And uh, that's it for the vacuum. And then for the actual wiring, I extended the two wires coming off of here. The ground is just being grounded to uh, my terminal over here with the rest of the grounds and the power wire which is just the illumination i actually teed that into the illumination for this gauge and they both connect right here to that one green wire that's coming off the radio pretty much you turn the headlights on the gauge lights up then for actually wiring in the power for the wideband i use the little fuse tap that i showed you soldered that right into the power wire coming from the box for the wideband uh ground same thing is going to the terminal here and that's really all you need for this thing. Um, the two output wires go into like a laptop or something I didn't use, I just left them wrapped up. But I think I'm just gonna shove this thing right in here. It fits in there pretty good. And then I'll uh, run this wire up and to the actual sensor. The sensor is installed somewhat. I have it going down through the hole for the old shifter cable when the car was in auto. I just fished it through that existing grommet and um, that connector is right here. I just have to connect that to the um, to the wideband controller. Like I said, it's not in the pipe now, it's just kind of hanging down under there. 
before it can be installed, it has to be calibrated, which is what we're gonna do right now. So in order to calibrate this, um, as I just showed you, sensor has to be out of the pipe and disconnected. First sequence of the calibration is gonna be putting the key on and then watching the lights on the controller box here. You see when the key goes on, light's gonna come on green, then it's gonna flash red, being there's no sensor connected. So you're gonna leave that powered on for about 30 seconds with that light flashing red before you go to the next step. So it's been 30 seconds, we're gonna shut it down. And the uh, next step is gonna be actually plugging the sensor in. So this wire right here, this is coming from the sensor. This is going into the controller. That's connected. Step three, we're gonna turn the key back on. Okay, it's lit up solid green. That means the sensor is ready to go. So now we're good to go underneath the car and screw the sensor into the pipe. Oh yeah, that puppy's warm. All right, so. It's working all right. I'm just gonna try to back up the wiring on here because I haven't fished through that hole. But that's pretty straightforward. And okay, that's perfect. Get my 22 on here. All right, I'm just gonna go tie these wires up against the trans, make sure they don't chafe on anything, and uh, then we'll wrap this video up. All right, so we're gonna have to wait for the sensor to warm up, and uh, we'll see where it starts reading. Uh, all right, we're starting to get something now. Boost gauge is working great. And uh, you can see when I put the headlights on, that dims down. So that's working perfectly. Oh yeah, and then my actual vacuum lines, what I ended up doing, I have the line coming out of the firewall right here underneath like the brake booster. I ran that behind the motor and over here to this T where I teed it off, one is going to my vacuum regulator. The other one goes down into another T where it splits into the uh, boost valve over here and then into the actual blower itself. I didn't end up using that vacuum block just because it was really bulky and I really couldn't find a good place to put it. I mean, I couldn't really get it in there with a drill unless I pulled the lid off. And then I was thinking about using double-sided tape, but I had a feeling once it heated up, um, it probably, the whole block was probably just gonna fall off the firewall anyway. So just by using a couple of elbows and uh, splitters, I was able to get all the vacuum lines hooked up. But just like that, we are one step closer to getting this car done. Appointment is set for next Saturday. We have a week until it's getting dropped off at the tuner. So in that time, I wanna get all this crap cleaned up, get it vacuumed. Um, clean the outside engine bay because the car is filthy. It's been sitting under this tree. Um, you saw my last video, we had that storm coming in as I was closing the video out. This uh, limb over here kind of fell off the tree and landed right next to the car. So I'm kind of glad that everything's pretty much done and it's gonna be out of the driveway finally. So as for upcoming videos, next week, I'm gonna be playing around with HP tuners.